So DxO Photolab version 8 is out today and it brings with it a bunch of nice new improvements. If you've already seen any of the hundreds of other videos that have all launched at exactly the embargo expiry time, please feel free to skip ahead using the chapter markers down below. I won't judge, because that's what I would do. First I'm going to talk a little bit about the different features and go through them uh, as a list, I suppose, because it's the easiest way of doing it. I've been using Photolab as my photo editor of choice for quite a while now. I much prefer it to Lightroom. I find it gives me better results faster, and that's really all that matters, I suppose. I do still have a copy of Lightroom, but I only use it for scanning uh, film negatives, curiously, mostly just because that's the only thing that the plugin that I use supports. Everything else I've been doing through Photolab, I'm very, very pleased with what I get out of it. I find it particularly very good at colour, and there is a slight improvement in that aspect in this update too, which we'll get to in a minute. But I'll start with the Deep Prime XD2S denoising system, and I feel like the name is getting progressively longer. But, I mean, that's the case with all sorts of uh, trademark names and things, they always just add extra bits onto the end. It's a slightly changed version of that from Pure Raw 4, where I was very, very impressed with it, and I made a video about that a few months ago. I can't remember anymore. Really impressed with it, particularly for bird photography. It performed excellently. Huge improvement over Deep Prime XD for my use case. It's very, very good. I have no complaints. So I don't know what they've actually improved in this version. It's quite subtle, but it does seem to work really well again. And so we'll do some comparisons on that in a minute. One thing to keep in mind is if you're a Fujifilm x Sensor user, so if you shoot a Fujifilm camera with an X in the name, it's not supported in this new version yet. Support is coming apparently, but they are fundamentally different sensors and uh, make up a smaller part of the market. So it just takes more time to add support for them as compared to Bayer sensors. But aside from that, they've also added some nice new improvements to the optical sharpening system. So I think they call this the lens softness compensation tool or something like that. And this is actually the big selling point of DxO software to me in that they perform lab tests of lenses and the sharpening tool has profiles specifically for each lens. It's a really, really nice way of getting better optical quality out of your glass. I've had a bunch of lenses that aren't really optically great, but they're very convenient and it makes them far more useful. You get much better quality photos out of them. They've improved it slightly in this version. Namely, they have reduced the amount of artifacting and haloing that can happen from it. It seems to work really well. That's a very nice improvement and we'll have a look at some examples of that as well. They've added a new loop tool, which is really convenient actually for previewing a lot of these changes. Things like the denoising, quite time intensive to run over the whole image, especially if you're using high resolution images. And so instead you get a little preview of it in a little loop. I really like that. It's working very well for me. The Final feature that I'm particularly interested in is something called a hue mask. So DxO has had a really good selective editing tools for a while. I use these quite a lot. I made a video uh, a few months back again about an addition to Photolab 7 where it allowed you to use their color wheel in those masks. Really, really like that feature. They've now taken it a step further and you can now select a hue to make a mask. So you could select red in your image and the mask would just encompass all of those reds. You can select the range that you want. And the interesting thing about this that they sort of missed in their presentation uh, that I watched and a few other people sort of missed is that it's less about manipulating those colors because you could already do that by masking it and just changing it with the color wheel. Now you can apply other changes to specific colors. So you could improve micro contrast just for reds. That's a really interesting feature. It's not something I've really seen around that much before. It could be really useful. Not something you use all the time, but it is something that I find very interesting. So we'll have a look at that as well. Now there's some improvement to the curves, but I don't really use curves that much. And I'm not sure if I should admit that online, but 
it's not something I've ever really paid a huge amount of attention to, so I'm not going to cover that in this video because I honestly don't really know what I'm doing with them. They've also improved the performance of it, and I've got no complaints there. It seems to perform really well, and that's a really nice thing for me because, frankly, most photo editing software these days runs like absolute rubbish. Photolab doesn't. It seems to run quite well for me, and this version is the best so far. It runs really smoothly, and it's working really well on my computer. So, those what well, that's my sort of summary of the changes. Now let's go and have a look at them more closely, and we'll start by going through some of the noise reduction improvements. In this comparison, I have processed the photo on the left through the first version of Deep Prime XD in Photolab 7, and the right version is through Deep Prime XD2S in Photolab 8. And there are some differences here. They're quite subtle on this photo, but this is a good example. Here is some artifacting in this feather, which is completely missing in the new version. Again, this area is neater in the new version. There's quite a lot of something going on here. This is something that I've, I've seen with Deep Prime XD in the past, and it's why up until now, I've opted not to use that model when it came to denoising bird photos. I found it really struggled with feathered detail. You can see a few other oddities around these sorts of areas where it's almost over sharpened or added in extra texture that doesn't need to be there as compared to the new version, which looks much more natural. Overall, they both do a pretty good job, but the new version just looks better. This is something that probably won't come through quite as well on YouTube due to the compression, but there is more visible texturing uh, or more visible noise, just luminance noise in the old version than in the new version. The new version is very, very clean. Historically, I don't mind having some noise texture, but the new one has done a very, very good job of cleaning it up in general. It does perform better for this use case. Here's another example that I've already generated. On the left is the prior version of just Deep Prime XD, XD2S on the right. And you can see this extra detail. It had a tendency to put these sort of horizontal texture lines and things into the feathers. You can see it more even over here as well. There's a lot of horizontal lines going across the feathers. These have been completely removed in the new version and as a result look much more natural. It has a tendency in the previous version to look quite rubbery or quite painterly. This isn't something you really want with feathers, and although it's not always obvious on every image, this one doesn't look too bad when zoomed out. I do vastly prefer the reliability of the new version. It tends to look much more natural in most scenarios and looks somewhat less over sharpened, curiously. I feel like the old version was adding too much unnecessary detail that shouldn't have been there, whereas the new version is much cleaner and tidier, and as a result, looks much more realistic. So now we come to my true torture test image, which I used in my Pure Raw 4 video. This photo of a yellow or gray wagtail. I mean, the bird is yellow, so you'd think it would be yellow, but who knows? Ornithologists are weird. and. When you zoom in, you can see on the right, this is actually a slightly processed version, removing the color noise. The original image is truly horrific. It's uh, really quite brutal. This was taken on the OM-1, a micro four thirds camera at ISO 25,600, and it is unusable in that state. And I've kept this image around because it's a, a, a really nice photo if it could ever be processed correctly, but also a great test for these bits of software. And so, this is unusable, that's very clearly unusable. But if we move over to these processed versions, you can see the difference that has occurred between the version of Deep Prime XD available in Photolab 7 on the left and that in the new version of 8 on the right. 7 did some really weird stuff. Deep Prime XD, here is the, there's like a, f a hard line between the in focus region and the out of focus region, where it's decided it just needs to add texture. Any texture seems to do, and it's added all sorts of random stuff going on here. This doesn't look like water ripples to me, it looks like uh, camouflage or 
something like that. It's very bizarre. In the new version, the transition is smoother. It, I think there's still a little bit of a hard edge in places, but it's significantly better. It's correctly come up with some ripple textures. Looks really, really good, much better. And when you look at the feathers as well, you can see these weird horizontal lines are now missing on the new version. That's a really nice improvement. There's extra texture uh, detail that was up in these feathers that's gone as well. It's done a much, much better job. Is this image now perfect? Well, no, but when you zoom out and you look at it as you would if it was printed, this is perfectly usable. I'm very happy with that. This is still utterly bizarre. So that is a massive improvement. And this is one of the reasons why I've been very pleased with the change from Deep Prime XD to Deep Prime XD2. And it is definitely worth the upgrade if you photograph something like birds in low light scenarios. Now I couldn't find any of my own photos that exhibited the problems with the previous version of the lens softness compensation, but we can use this photo as a fairly good demonstration of the effect it has on your photos. Nice photo of the beach of Tembi. And this has been started using the uh, DxO Film Pack uh, Portra 400 option. And I've just taken off the color grain because we're talking about sharpness. So that would make sense. But overall, the picture looks nice. But when you zoom in, you can see that there's quite a lot of lack of detail back here. That's generally fine. I'm not too worried about that. But you're going to sharpen your picture somewhat anyway. You usually want to if you're going to printing it. It's very nice to have an automatic option that does such a good job as this does. It's a very, very nice improvement, particularly on this text. It's very nice and sharp without having any artifacting going on. It's really sharpened up all of these lines. And particularly in the details here at the back, you can see the difference from before to now really clarifies a lot of those details and actually makes it visible from a distance in the photo where previously it was quite muddy. It's a very nice tool and these are based off of the lens profiles. So this lens used in this photo was the Panasonic 28-200 f4-7.1. to It's not a particularly sharp lens, it's a very practical lens, but with this profile I'm very happy with the results. It makes it a very, very useful combination because you can rely on Photolab to get really nice crisp results at the end of it. And it really does bring out the details in areas like this. We're going to take a quick look now at the Hue Masks feature. So we're going to the local adjustments panel and going to click on this new tool here. I'm going to pick the green on this crocheted cactus and then we can manipulate the range a little bit. So I'm going to pull in the yellows a little as those only really pop in at the bottom. And I'm just going to take out a few of those. It's going to remove more of the masking from the books. I'm going to expand the green range a little bit just to cover the edge of the cactus about there. And then we're going to erase any remaining bits around the edge that we don't need. I'm using a trackball if you're wondering why this is a little bit awkward looking. It's not very fast. So just do that there as well. There we go. And now we've got a mask that we can use to change this sort of uh, selected color in interesting ways. We could previously have manipulated the color green using the HSL tool with a mask of a control point over this area but now we can change things like the contrast. So I can increase the contrast of this subject. I can increase some micro contrast. We could shift the white balance of it. So let's warm it up a little bit, uh, somewhere like that. We can play with saturation. So we could pull it all the way down and turn it grayscale, or we can uh, really amp it up and we can even mess with the sharpness or blur intensity. This could be really interesting for portraiture in particular. I don't have any examples that I can use right now, but being able to mask based on skin tones really quickly and to then be able to uh, change the sharpness of certain skin features and things could be a really nice way of softening skin and be a useful effect. But Overall, I think this is a really interesting addition to the masking toolset in Photolab 
and is one I'm quite happy to have. Well, that about does it for my preview of DxO Photolab version 8. If you have any comments or questions about it, please do put them down in the comment section below. I'd be really happy to read them. If you're looking to download a free trial or to purchase DxO Photolab version 8, then I have an affiliate link down below as well and probably up on the screen now. You don't have to follow that. I won't make you, but it does help me out if you do so, albeit mostly just with my compulsive camera equipment purchasing problem. Thank you very much for watching anyway, and if this is for the first of my videos that you've seen, please consider subscribing as well if you want to see more like it. I may oblige. See you next time.